You're listening to The Dave Black Show. Welcome back, guys. 97.1 FM Talk, Dave Glover Show. But that last hour just kind of got away from us, didn't it? Yeah, it did, man. But that was great, dude. You did a fantastic uh, let's job. see here. A little bit of promoting going on. Yes. We have our uh, Halloween contest going on. So if you've been listening to the show any amount of time, you know Halloween's a big deal to us. And we always have the Halloween show. We have a bunch of fun. And three of you, just three, it's getting smaller and smaller. Three of right. you will get to go along with us uh, coming up in a, in a couple of weeks. And you can be one of those people by going to 971talk.com. 97 words or less. Let me know why you would be a unique unique member of the team okay beautiful so you can guess we get a lot of like i like spooks you know it's just you know what makes you different from everyone else why should we pick you out of like three thousand people will get to go along and be with us Perfect. also this saturday the band's playing out at maggie malone's in winsville so we invite you to come on out nine to one tom will be there i'll be there tearing for, up the cowbell yep. mm-hmm. and uh what else what else what else I feel like there's more. Uh, don't vote. Don't vote. Challenge on uh, We're beginning to get the entries in. It's a lot of fun, too. It it's is, neat. It, it really makes me feel, uh, I don't know, weird um, to see people putting uh, the 971talk.com on their cars and the side of a bus and things like that. And basically, because we have no money to buy advertising ourselves, we're depending on you, the listener, for guerrilla marketing to go out there into the community and get the biggest sign that says, don't vote, 971talk.com. You want to put Dave Glover on there, that's not going to hurt anything. Nothing. Um, and then you, you send us your submissions. You can find out how at 971talk.com. The biggest, most creative is going to win a $7,000 motorbike. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's worth it, baby. Also, I've got to even mention this in the 4 o'clock hour. Thank you, uh, all of you. We were just named for the second time the yes. RFT Reader's Poll Best FM Radio Personality. Congrats, buddy. That's very cool. That a boy. That's way better. Well no deserved. offense to the RFT. No, I'll say but it. But I'd way rather have that than have the RFT Them say... Pick- Here's our favorite. I know what you're saying. When, yep. when the people say, well, that's fine and good, but we really prefer this guy, that's that's pretty neat. That's Beautiful. wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Let's, guys. Let's uh, get my stuff all discombobulated here. Hold on. Give me a second. It'll be Talk there. amongst yourself. It'll be there. Um, the way this show works is uh, Becca, the producer, will come into me every day and say, okay, uh, we've got this potential guest and that potential guest. And 99 times out of 100, Tom, you've done this with me for eight years. For eight years. It's I say, no. not so much. Yes. And last week, she brought uh, something to me. She said, okay, we've got this guy. He's a scientist mm-hmm. and he's a Christian. And cool. he has a view on global warming and how it relates to you know religion and the end of the mm-hmm. world and revelation. I said, yes, I will talk about that. Two things I'm very interested in. One, religion. And two, the whole global warming debate. Okay. So in, in studio here live, we have Dr. Dave Gustafson. Dave, good to meet you. Thanks very much, Dave. Uh, I'm just going to read what it says here because it kind of lines it out. A born-again follower of Jesus and a practicing environmental scientist, a graduate of Stanford University, received a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering, then earned a Ph.D. from the University of Washington in Seattle, um, authored over 50 scientific articles, and he's also the author of... Uh, Reaping the Real World Wind, A Biblical Response to the Theory of Man-Made Global Warming. Wow. You must be the only guy. I mean, I've never heard this before. I've never heard someone taking religion and marrying it to this topic. Yeah, I've I've looked around uh, before I started working on this book and became very interested in the theory of man-made global warming to find out if anybody had ever uh, picked up on this particular thing that I had noticed when I began studying the theory uh, as a scientist, which is that many of the predictions – of man-made global warming actually match up very, very closely with uh, biblical prophecy, particularly those passages in, Re- in Revelation. So that's when I uh, fired off the idea about producing the book, mm-hmm. and uh, I got a response back from a, a small Christian publisher out in Oregon uh, who has uh, published the book for me. It's currently being printed as we speak mm-hmm. and should be available 
uh, anywhere books are sold uh, within the next month or so. Okay. Well, let's take it sort of systematically here. We'll start with the scientific part of it, with global warming. Sure. Now, uh, a couple years ago, it seemed to me that you were a pariah if you had any other theory except the kind of the Al Gore, you know, we're doing it, here's why we're doing it, carbon footprint, all that kind of stuff. And then it started to uh, to wane a bit. You had more people coming out and saying, oh, wait a second, how about sunspots and how about this and how about that? Where do you fall scientifically along that it's man-made or it's something that just happens every 10,000 years? We just don't know it. Well, actually, I made a pers- bit of a personal journey myself because when I first heard about the theory back in the uh, early 1990s, I was very, very skeptical about the reality of man-made global warming, largely because I, I happen to disagree very strongly with Al Gore on political issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was very skeptical, probably had sort of the same view that people like Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh have about it, which is that it's basically just a hoax uh, foisted upon us by a bunch of liberals, uh, uh, you know, Al Gore included, who are trying to take our personal freedoms away from it. So I really hadn't looked all that carefully at the theory. Uh, but about a year and a half ago, uh, I was asked to look into it. And when I did, I was quite surprised to learn that the science is, in fact, very valid. And uh, that, if anything, the predictions that are coming out right now are probably undershooting what the actual warming trajectory is. In other words, we're warming quite a bit faster, I believe, than the uh, current predictions of the IPCC or Intergovernmental mm-hmm. Panel on Climate Change. So I would put myself in the same category of those who believe that the IPCC predictions are probably a little bit too sluggish and that the rate of warming is actually quite a bit faster uh, than uh, a, that is widely recognized even you know within uh, some of the IPCC uh, communities. So you're a guy who has come to believe it even though you didn't want to, sort of. Well, exactly. I, I When I first heard about it, I I really didn't believe it at all. I was, for instance, I I was quite a a student of chaos theory. There was a very important book that came out back in the 1980s and and some important work by a guy at MIT (laughs) who had demonstrated that, in fact, you cannot predict uh, weather conditions over the next few days because of the butterfly effect and all Mm -hmm. those sorts of things. Uh, But what I didn't understand was that uh, that didn't mean that you couldn't predict climate over much longer time periods. And in fact, we now know that that is possible because there's a different mathematical set of equations that describes long-term climate versus short-term weather. So it, a lot, to a lot of people, including myself, it really doesn't make sense. But in fact, when you look, look at the mathematics, it is true. But even though we can't predict what the weather's going to be like a couple of weeks from now in terms of the precise you know, rainfall conditions and temperature and that sort of thing, we can, in fact, predict what the overall trends are going to be over the decades sorts of timescales. And that's, in fact, what the models do with quite a bit of uh, accuracy, actually.